All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be finally listening for keystrokes from our keyboard, which was the main purpose of learning the Py input library. Then for the sake of completion, we are also going to be learning how to listen or find the position of mouse in real time. So without wasting any time, let's get started. In the previous video, we needed to control the keyboard. So we imported the controller. And in this video, we need to listen to keystrokes. So we are going to be importing a listener. So the first thing we need to do is import the listener from the Py input package. Now, if you remember in the previous videos, we talked about how when you open up a file, some memory and some resources are allocated to the file. And after our work is done, we need to release those resources. Similarly, when we declare a listener, some resources of our system is allocated to that listener. And after the work is done of that listener, we need to release those resources. But the problem is we don't really know when should we release those resources because our program is going to be listening for keystrokes continuously and it's only going to end if we stop the program. This is where the with keyword comes in handy. It will release the resources automatically after the work of listener is done. After this, we are just going to create the listener object and inside this listener object, it requires a parameter known as on press. And this on press parameter requires a value of a function which will be called whenever a key is pressed on a keyboard. So we'll just call this function write to file. We haven't created this function yet, but we are going to create it soon. And then we are just going to type in as listener. So what this means is, and we'll just also put a colon. So what this means is that we are saving the instance of this listener as this listener. So we can also name it as L. Actually, let me just name it as L because it will be difficult to explain it as listener and listener. So just like we did it with files that we saved the instance of this log.txt file in this F and then we can use this F to write to a file or read to a file or do anything with it. Similarly, we are saving the instance of this listener in this variable of L. And after this, we can write something like L.join and this will make sure that our keystrokes are joined together. Now let's go over this listener once more so that we can understand properly what each line and each word of this listener is doing. So first we use the with keyword to make sure that the resources are released after the work of listener is done. Then we created the listener object and we use the parameter of off on press. Now what this is going to do is that whenever a key is pressed on a keyboard, it is going to call this on press area and then this on press is going to call this write to file function which we haven't created yet but what this function is going to do is that it's going to send a key to this function that is write to file and then we can use that key to store that in a file so for example let's say you pressed a key let's say a on our keyboard then it's going to call this function write to file and it is going to send the letter a to this function of write to file and then using this open log.txt and then writing it to a file, we can save the letter A to that file. Then we save the instance of this listener in the variable L. Now you will understand the function of this join when we actually run the first version of our key logger. But what it basically does is that it adds single quotes to each letter and makes sure that all the keystrokes are joined together. When we run this whole program, you are going to understand very clearly what is the function of this join. But for now, let's create this write to file function. So we are just going to create a function. Let's call it write to file. And then inside this function, it's going to take a value that is the parameter of a key. And then we'll just put a colon and let me just give proper tabs so that there is proper indentation. All right. So what this is going to do is that whenever this write to function, write to file function is called, it's going to send the letter A to this key. So this key basically contains the letter A. Now this key is of type key code. You know, the variables are of different types. Some variable are of strings, some variables are of floats. This key value is actually of key code type parameter. So we first need to convert this key to a string type. We can do that by writing key data equals to str, which will basically con convert this key to a string type. And then instead of this hello again, we are just going to write key data into our file. So let me just copy and paste it over here. And that's pretty much it. Now we can run this main.py file and see if it's working or not. So we are just going to click on run main. 
and this will make sure that the listener is continuously listening for keystrokes and then we can go to our web browser or whatever place you want and I'm just going to type in google.com and test whether it's storing each of the letter in the log.doc text file or not. So I'm just going to type in g-o-o-g-l-e dot c-o-m. So let's go back to our keylogger and open this log.txt file and as you can see it has saved the letter g double o g l e dot com in a log.txt file. So we are now sure that the first version of our keylogger is working. Now obviously we don't want these single quotes to appear in our keylogger so we are going to make sure that we remove them first before saving them to this log.txt file but that we are going to do in the next video. Let's actually try this again out. So I'm again going to go to, let's say, let's open a new tab and I'm just going to type in something like a double -T -R -E -Y -A dot in. So let's go back to our log.txt file and see if that works. Now, as you can see, after google.com, it has, it says a double -T -R -E -Y -A dot in. So our keylogger is working. Now, if I press enter after writing arthre dot in, and go back to our log.txt file, as you can see, it says key dot enter. So if you press something like backspace or enter or control or shift on our keyboard, it's going to give us this kind of a format. So for example, when we press enter, it gives us the format of key dot enter. Now you see these single quotes and how these keystrokes are joined together. This is actually done by this L dot join function. So now you properly understand what is the use of this join function. It joins all these letters together and adds these single quotes to them. Now let me just stop this keylogger. And now we are going to focus on the last part that is listening to your mouse. Now this is optional and you can skip to the next video if you want. And we are going to work on removing the single quotes in the next video. And we are going to some, do some more uh, file handling stuff in the next video. But if you want to learn how to listen to your mouse position, you can continue with this video. Just for the sake of completion of this spy input library, I also want to teach you guys how to listen to a mouse. So if you don't want to like learn this, you can just skip this video and go to the next video. Now, because I didn't want to disturb this control.py and this main.py file, I've created this new listen.py file and inside this, we are going to learn how to see the position, the real time position of a mouse. So the first thing we are going to do is just import the pi input package and pi input dot mouse. And then from this, we are just going to import the listener just like we did with our keyboard. And literally we have to do the same thing. We just, we can just copy this listener and we can paste it over here. Now, instead of this on press, what we have to do, we have to write on move. So you can just write on then underscore move. And what this on move is going to do is that whenever we move our mouse, it's going to call this write to file function. So let's actually create this write to file function by typing in def then write to file. And instead of the key, what this function of on move does is that it transfers the value of x comma y. That is x is basically how much distance it has covered from left to right. And the y is how much distance it has covered from top to bottom. So it's going to send both of these values to this write to file function in the form of x comma y. Now what we are going to do is that we are just going to print this on the screen. We are not going to save it on our file just because we don't need to. And we are just going to print this out. And inside this, I'm just going to print location. Actually, let's make it position. Position of current mouse. And then inside the curly brackets, I'm going to put in zero. And after that, I'm going to format it in the form of x comma y. So what this does is that it formats it in the proper format of x comma y. And instead of this zero, this format is replaced. You'll understand this properly after we run this program. So actually, let's run this listen.py file by right clicking on it and clicking on run.listen. And as you can see, whenever we move our mouse, the value of x comma y changes. So it says position of current mouse send one three four one one and let's stop this now so what this is doing is that whenever our mouse is moved it's going to this on move part and then it's going to this write to file actually it's not write to file but i've just copied and pasted it you can name the function whatever you want but it's going to call this write to file function and it's going to transfer the values of x comma y of the position of this mouse to this function 
and then we are formatting in, in the format of these bracket kind of format and then this x comma y are being replaced with the zero and that is how you are going to listen to the position of the mouse in real time so guys this is pretty much it for this video in the next video we are going to work with a log.txt file and we are going to see how we can remove these single quotes and we are going to see how we can handle these key codes so i'll see you in the next video